Good morning, folks. The strong geomagnetic storms are continuing and the effects are numerous and widespread across the expected sectors. We're going to dive right into it. Beginning at spaceweathernews.com and checking out the last day on our star and 193 angstroms, remaining filament structures on the north are holding firm and begin to turn towards the departing limb with the dark transequatorial coronal hole. The earth-facing solar quiet effect continued. Sunspot center disk were calm but for minor surface surging that did not produce any ejecta. The solar flaring remained down in the dumps, not much going on, and when we come to the sunspots we see that they are spread magnetically. Beta polarity exists but not in any close proximity and we've also got some new spots on the north near the incoming limb. Last week of our star in 211 angstrom shows the set of coronal holes that swung past Earth last two ended up merging, but the multiple IMF openings have forced multi-shockwave coronal hole streams that impacted consecutively over the last three days, driving level three geomagnetic storms across the planet with isolated events actually hitting level four. As plasma continues blasting the upper atmosphere, we'll look at the top storm effect candidates. As the disruptions were beginning, a transformer blew in India, exact type of scenario we watch for. Sadly, this one burned a man alive. We saw multiple events like this one where train service was cut for hours due to electrical problems. On average, there is slightly less than one small plane crash per day. But once again, we see a surge in aircraft trouble during powerful solar-driven disturbances to our planet's magnetic field. One of those landed on a roof in California. Better candidates involve increased Indian load shedding like we see with every solar storm, except this time, the outage was long enough to kill someone at a local hospital due to ventilator failure. The static electricity warnings when you're pumping fuel get a big boost during solar storms as these folks in Sudan found out yesterday when ignition appeared to come out of nowhere, and then it spread to cause a tremendous explosion that could be seen across the Nile. But folks, those aren't even the top candidates. I couldn't possibly hope to put them all in this news video, but the electrical fires and power disruptions surged by a factor of 10 on Mother's Day on engines like Google and Bing. Surely not all of these can actually be blamed on the sun. Things happen. But once again, we see an unfathomable increase in these reported events during the strong electromagnetic disruptions, wires even snapping under clear blue skies. The one spot of good news is that this coronal hole score for earthquake production, which showed a strong tendency for induction this past week, was completely overshadowed and had its energy stolen by our planetary shield. Apart from only mid-level earthquakes, a couple volcanoes is all we have to see, but the Northeast Pacific gives us reason to keep watching as another volcano nearby, Mount St. Helens, is undergoing magma refilling as an earthquake swarm is intensifying beneath the mountain. Other news is weather. This is a tornado that ripped through Colorado this weekend. Reports like this came in through Oklahoma, and tonight things are expected to get rough once again. Low in the west driving that convergence on its eastern edge, and that's where the storms will be tonight. We're going to have a deeper look out for you today with Billy and I discussing that electricity and plasma experiment we showed in the news yesterday. It'll be episode 39 of the year thus far. We've got pressure and radar forecasts for Europe, down under, South America, and Africa. Also got some shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.